Besties Hot Tips. How to, how you do, folks? It's old Rusty here. Listen, I'm your cousin and you're mine, and we're basically like family at this point. And you know what family does? Why? We share information with one another. That's right. Today, I'm going to tell you five reasons why you should start shopping at this. It's not a particular store. It's a type of store. And my guess is you've got one near you. If you're not already checking these places out, folks, get off your behinds already and get out there because there's great deals to be found. We're going to talk about it today. We're going to be like Scrooge McDuck, just swimming around. But instead of coins, it's going to be jewelry. Let's dive in. Reason number one to be shopping at consignment shops, folks, is because of the type of items that end up at these places. If you like costume or fine jewelry or even clothing or shoes, then this is the place for you. Now, you might say, Rusty, I don't care about clothing. That's fine. But jewelry is small. It's easy to photograph. You can store a bunch of it at your location. It sells really quickly, usually for good money. You can get them at good prices, and they're found at these consignment shops. The types of people who are putting this stuff in there are women of various ages, but typically they have something that they just don't care to wear anymore, and they'd rather have the money for it. So you need to get out there and check this stuff out. Well, you're looking at here, folks, is a small table full of individually bagged um costume jewelry pieces um they range from earrings to brooches um necklaces things like that every single one of these that you're looking at is already individually bagged now because we just photographed them to get them ready uh, to sell on one of our ebay stores um and that'll be going in over the next week or two this is kind of a cool piece it's got these little green uh, gemstones set in as the eyes. Um, the other thing that's really unique about these pieces, and, and of course I'm going to grab one that is not going to fit what I'm about to say. So there are some exceptions in here. However, the majority of the pieces in this lot, folks, are branded. They, uh, they have a maker's mark on them. It says who the manufacturer was. Like this one, for example, it's right up underneath of there. If you can see that. And several of these also are, um, you know, I don't know, not the kinds of brands that you see as often. Um, there's one I was looking at a little bit earlier today. I mean, this is a kind of an obvious common one, which is uh, Monet, as you can see there. And that one we come across quite frequently. But then there's some others like this one where if I can zoom in here and you can see... It's going to be hard with these doggone bags. I might have to take her out. Well, let me let me just take her out and stop fooling around. Here you can see, I think it says, it looks like it starts with a T. Is it like Tara or Taro or Toro? Something like that, folks. You might know better than me. But, um, you know, it's just a various pieces here. And every one of these... I pulled these out specifically because I wanted to show you the types of things that I have found here at these consignment shops. Um, I've gone to a few places within about a 30 mile radius of where we are. Here's another one. Let me, let me scroll up on this one. What do we got here? Looks like a Dane craft. We sold one of those just yesterday actually off of uh, eBay, same brand. Um, here's one that is, uh, it's a gold field piece. It's a little bracelet and it's, uh, it's on the little clasp over here, but it says Cremence with a K. Cremence, um, that little, uh, rhinestone there has seen better days. It's quite dark now, probably got some water or something in there. Um, but anyhow, folks, we'll start diving into some of these and I'll show you what I looked for and why I got these. 
reason. Number two to be shopping at consignment shops is that the competition is much lower than what you're going to see at thrift stores and antique stores. Let me just tell you that old Rusty is regularly running around to all of these places that I just talked about. And you know what? I'm seeing the same people all the time. Yes, several different resellers are out there, folks. They're, uh, they're hitting these places multiple times a week in some cases. And so not only do you have to have the uh, knowledge to, to find that item and know it's going to make you money, but you also have to chance to get there at the moment it's out before someone else grabs it. It's not as much the case at these consignment shops, especially if you're a man, because a lot of men don't go into these consignment shops because usually they're not interested in jewelry or clothing. All right. And uh, and so, you know, the, the, the people who are picking and who are running around, they're going to yard sales, estate sales, antique stores and thrift stores. But consignment shops are not as much on the radar. And you might be surprised you can go out there and find something that you might have missed in another place because someone else grabbed it. The traffic is much higher at other places, but consignment shops, not as much. Sometimes the items you get from these stores could have silver content. This one, for example, has a 90 on it, but this is made out of silver. It's this really interesting pendant. As you can see, it says Sunstone Nauvoo, Illinois. It's really bizarre, but it's like a little pendant or maybe a charm, potentially. Right here, we have this interesting modernist type uh, a ring with synthetic opal but if you flip her over on this little tab here you're going to see it says 925 okay 925 so sterling silver as well here's a piece it's like a little brooch it's got like a carved piece up there i'm not sure if that's bone or if that's actually coral but this is a gold filled piece and you can tell because it says it uh down there and this is a brand called winard w-i-n-a-r-d a little brooch and then this one, sometimes these types of brooches are gold-filled as well. I flipped it over to look, and guess what I found? Coro with a little Pegasus-looking critter up there. Uh, or maybe it's a unicorn or something. I'm not quite sure. But you can find good brands, folks. I'm finding these nice brands at these places. Here's one, uh, and I don't know exactly. Sometimes they're hard to make out what the Janus something here it looks like. Um, but it's a big old... It's just a big old lion's head. Um, someone's going to be real excited about that. Look at this one right here. It's like a cherub sitting up on this. I don't know what it's sitting on, but you got a couple of square rhinestones down there. And this says, folks, that it is from a collection of the Vatican Library Collection. So I don't know if someone visited the Vatican and they had a little gift shop and they purchased this or if this is made by a different uh, company. I have no idea yet, but we photographed it. We're going to get the research to figure out what the comps are on this kind of thing and then we're going to get to it. These are the types of things that I find at thrift stores all the time, but you know what? I spent less than $3 on all of these. So you can find gold, you can find silver, and various other costume pieces. Reason number three, folks, we're up to three. The reason you should go to consignment shops to get your jewelry is because most of them that I have encountered um, do something called um, markdown pricing schemes. And what that means is they'll take in clothing and jewelry on consignment and right when it goes out, they'll put it at a particular price. If that stuff sits in there for 30 days, sometimes less than that, they'll mark it down. If it stays in there for another 30 days, they mark it down again. And a lot of times they'll show you how much it was originally priced for and what it is today. Everything in this video that you're seeing that I got at consignment shops had been marked down once or multiple times. And I end up spending only two to three dollars, in some cases slightly more, but always less than four and a half dollars for every piece of jewelry I get. Some of these end up having gold and silver in them as well. So I'm not spending any more at a consignment shop than I would at a thrift store and an antique, an antique store or estate sale. And in a lot of cases, I'm spending less because these things stay in there and get marked down. One of the reasons, as I mentioned before, is because there just isn't as much traffic. So you have an opportunity to come in, get something at a deal because no one else saw it. No one else knew what it was. No one else wanted it. And that's good for us resellers. 
sometimes very large, gaudy, extravagant, chunky, they use the word oftentimes in, uh, or modernist, brutalist. There's all these terms they use, but this is like a gigantic pen. I mean, look at this thing sitting on my hand, how big it is. Enamel painted, you've got this scarab. And then you flip it over and you see that there it's branded down in here. You see this on there? Bold elegance. Bold elegance. If you want to be bold and elegant at the same time, folks be wearing this. I mean, shoot. I don't know who's wearing that. Who's wearing that? I don't know. Somebody wants this too, though. It's like a little old, looks like a sea turtle, but it's kind of cool. The little finger, little uh, hands and stuff, they articulate there. Um, I'm going to look around the bottom of it. I'm not seeing a brand there, but then look underneath the old chin. Why, Alan made this one. <laughs> Big old gold colored necklace. Look at that. And some of these things you would think no one would ever wear sometimes fetch enormous prices. No joking. It happens, folks. Here's a big old pendant, kind of a big old green kind of carved floral thing. This has got a brand here at the bottom as well. And that's what I look for. I, oftentimes, I find that... Look at this. This is uh, Vogue, Vogue Lane, France. Got some faux pearls in here. Some tassels. Oh, goodness gracious. This right here, I don't know what to do with. It is not branded. I got it on a chance. You can see that there's definitely some, um, I don't know if that's residue from polishing at one time or if that's simply corrosion uh, or, or tarnishing from the fact that this is copper. But look at this. This is kind of like a root beer colored uh, lucite pieces. I need to test this to make sure this is not Bakelite. Um, but you can see someone strung this up with some sort of like a small uh, metal, you know, wire through there. Through all of these, you know, dark brown colored beads. And they just need some serious cleaning. Uh, almost looks like some of them are degrading a little bit. And I don't know who would want to wear this, but you can see it's a fairly old one based on that particular type of, if this is original, that type of clasp can kind of help date it a little bit. It's not terribly, it's not unattractive. It's it's interesting. I don't know what you'd wear it with, but that's not for me to decide, folks. I'm not going to be wearing this. Somebody might find that interesting. Um, kind of a cool design. Um, but this is the kind of stuff, sometimes you can find super, super high-end jewelry. I mean, I'm talking things like Chanel, and, uh, and, and really higher end stuff that sells well at these places because the person getting them does not care to do the research, you know? They're just like, oh, it's a costume necklace. They just kind of give it a once over and then they decide that it, that's all it is. Ultra Craft is this one. This is kind of like a, it's definitely set up as a brooch, a little pin. Consignment shops, they have low traffic. They have good quality items. They mark those items down. And here's reason number four to go to a consignment shop in order to buy jewelry or other items that you could make money on like shoes or like clothing. So the re one of the reasons that I like to go to consignment shops is because usually the person who is inspecting and pricing this jewelry is not trained specifically on jewelry. In fact, the percentage of jewelry, for example, in a consignment shop is like less than 5% of the other items in there. They get high volume amounts of items of clothing and shoes and belts and jackets and other apparel, but jewelry, there's just not as much there. So they spend a little bit of time, they look at it, they price it, they'll do a cursory glance to see if they notice anything that would indicate higher value, and then they just stick it out there. All the time, I'm finding stuff. Now, did they just not have the expertise? Did they miss it? I don't know. But time and time again, I'll find that there's stuff marked as gold or silver. There'll be really high-end brands. Just two days ago, I bought two pairs of earrings for $3 a piece. Brought them back at the warehouse. I did some inspection. I found that they both were worth about $150 a piece. That's $6 investment for a potentially $300 return. And that happens quite frequently for me at consignment shops. So, 
they're more worried about the volume of all these other things. They have to spend their time pricing this stuff, getting it out, marking down things. They've got a lot of work to do, and they just don't spend a whole lot of time inspecting that jewelry. So go into a place that has items that may be valuable, but the person who's in charge of them is not a um, experienced or a trained person to inspect jewelry or research it uh, is a good thing. They don't have the time to get every piece of jewelry and get on and do 30 minutes of research. Per no, too high a volume. So that can be an advantage for you. The pieces that I'm showing you folks in here, though they, they can range in the manufacturers and also in age. So like these are some newer pieces. Tommy Hilfiger, I mean, that's quite new. This is a little bit older, but you can see this is kind of that, uh, I don't remember if this is Irish um, or or Scottish or what it is, but um, here's a brand though. On this one, it says Solvar, S-O-L-V-A-R. Uh, some little rhinestones in there. That's adorable. This right here, a little pen, just looks like a, a brushed silver metal with a rhinestone. But if you turn it over, you find out that it's got sterling. It's sterling silver again. And then you find things also that are old and antique like this. This is an older piece. It's sterling silver. It is uh, it's tarnished pretty heavily. It's got a very large tiger eye or cat's eye cab cabochon on there. And then this, I don't even think that this is made in our country. I think that this looks like, I need to do more research, but something that, things I've seen from like, um, you know, Nepal or, um, you know, other places and, you know, and other parts of the world, you know, where the jewelry, uh, the look of it and the items that they're using to create it are not the types of things that we have around here. Now, I don't know. Is this stuff carved amber? Is this stuff Bakelite? Is it just a cheaper plastic? We need to do some tests before we get up in the store. But $3 for something like this, all day long I can sell this and make money. And everything in here that you saw that I'm showing you was, was minimal cost. And you may not be able to find stuff like this at thrift stores near you. You might not get there in time, right? Because somebody else grabbed it for you. Maybe you don't have a lot of turnover in your thrift stores. This one's JJ. But these these deals are out there. And uh, like, I, like I've been saying uh, in these videos uh, about this stuff for a while, is that if you know how to inspect stuff, if you if you search really hard now again I'm picking up a, a piece that I know is not marked with a manufacturer on it but that's a gigantic stone it's just glass I believe but of course before you would do something like that you would want to take a tester if you have one and test those to make sure that they aren't some sort of actually a precious you know metal of some kind a nice little uh, little brooch you got a kind of a cool look here these red flowers on this brooch. You can sell these things individually, folks. If I'm paying two or three dollars, you just list it at auction for ten bucks. If it sells, you made money. Or you could put them in a lot and you could sell similar items. You could wait till you have a hundred pieces and then try to get over a thousand dollars or more. I mean, we do this routinely. We'll we'll do lots of just brooches, lots of just earrings, necklaces, what have you. Here's another little little uh, brooch here. Looks like it says PMI, maybe. PMI. And what do we have here? Oh, it's just a little old kiddo and looking like it's lay laying in a sock. <laughs> you never know what you're going to find, folks. Here we got several little pendants with like rhinestones, different colored stones, and even though... They may not be made out of gold or any precious metals, and maybe those are just glass or plastic. If they're attractive enough looking and you can sell them in lots like this, basically there's always a buyer. Real quick, everyone, if you have not had a chance to check out the new channel from my brother here at the warehouse called What Sold, do yourself a favor. Folks, get over there. Have you ever wondered what full-time resellers and even part-time resellers are actually selling? what they're actually paying for these items and what money is actually coming in. If you've ever wondered that, folks, this channel is for you. It just started. We're already getting great response and awesome cousins are finding their way over there. So please check it out. I'll show you a link right here. You can come back 
at your leisure. This is a beautiful little necklace we got with some really cool uh, cab pieces on here, some little rhinestones, pretty intricate design. Um, and you know, you got a brand up here. What is that brand I'm trying to see? Let me pull this puppy out so we can take a closer look. This is what it looks like when it's all laying out. You can see it's quite an attractive piece here. All the stones are intact. The brand is right down here and it actually says Celebrity. Celebrity is the brand on that. Had to turn it over to find it. Here's a cool little piece, an old kitty cat here. Whiskers uh, galore here, little rhinestones for the eyeballs. Turn it over and it's a Mamzel. Mamzel is the brand. You got other animals too. You got things like this old old uh, bird here, like it's flying through the air. And I don't know if this is like what it is that caused that. I, it looks almost like um, poor soldering job, or maybe they broke. But this is the JJ brand again. Got several of those. These came in just last week. They're earrings. As you can see, drop dangle earrings. You got some clear rhinestones. And then these blue stones, believe it or not, are actually sapphires, folks. Now, they're synthetic sapphires. They're lab-created, so they're not terribly valuable. But it's an attractive-looking piece. And you always want to look when you find these earrings with the flat portion of the, the part that would go through the earlobe. That flat portion, if it's going to have gold or silver, a lot of times it'll be marked on that. These are not because they are not made of gold or silver. But always, uh, when you're inspecting, check those out. If you hold these up to the light, uh, like if I were to hold these up like this to the light, you'll see... Well, can we see? Yeah, you'll start to see some of that light go through the, in there and they're they're still dark blue, but they are they are sapphires. And of course, if we're going to spend time actually photographing these well, we'll make sure to try to shine some light through those so that they, uh, they look as attractive as possible for that buyer we're looking for. All right. And the fifth reason to go to consignment shops is alternative opportunities. And here's what I mean. There's two different opportunities at a, at a consignment shop that may interest you. Number one is if you have items that aren't selling real well or you want to just get other avenues to sell items. Let's say you've had something on your eBay store and it just doesn't seem to want to sell. You can take those items in and you can consign them. You can become uh, a person who puts stuff in there and they'll sell it on your behalf. So there's one avenue you could make a little extra money. And then the second thing is that a lot of these consignment shops either um, give the items back if they don't sell, but in a lot of cases they simply donate them. So let's say someone puts in some, some jewelry and it sits there for 30 days. They mark it down, doesn't sell. Sits another 30 days, they mark it down, doesn't sell. It's 90 days in, folks, no one's even picked up that piece of jewelry, hardly expressed interest. What do they do? They're going to donate it. So what you might do possibly is go in and say, hey, listen, I sell things. Instead of just donating all of these items at the end of the 90 day period, why don't we work out a situ, you know, some sort of a um, arrangement where I'll come in once a month, I'll pick up the items that didn't sell, and then you still, you know, worker or manager at a consignment shop, you still have an opportunity to make some money on that. I'll do the work, I'll list it, I'll sell it, and then we'll split that some kind of a, per, uh, of a percentage. That helps you because a you can make money, b you get a good reputation, c. You build a rapport with that place. Maybe that could open up other opportunities in the future. And uh, and just the list goes on, folks. And so maybe you don't have to spend all that time, all the time running around in your car, spending gas money to look for items. Maybe you work out an arrangement and you just go pick up stuff from them that they already had their shot at selling and weren't able to do it. Then you can give uh, that uh, those items a much larger market all over the country or all over the world, depending on your shipping preferences in a, a store like eBay or Etsy. So that could open up some more opportunities for you as a reseller. You folks are just downright great. Thank you for being here and a part of this community. If you have any advice or help for us, please leave comments. And also remember the What Sold channel. But you know what? Doesn't stop there. Postcard Planet, High Spirits, 
I mean, there's several others in the Slick Web Media family. Sound Machine? I mean, goodness, folks. Check out the description. You'll see where to go. Have a good time now. I hope you find some treasure. Rusty, how, how, how do? Rusty, 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 how do? Rusty